Hey and welcome to today's video by Flowmotion. Are you as excited as I am? Because today they just released Adobe After Effects 2019. So today we are going to have a quick look, uh, overview over all the new stuff that's in there. So let's get started. So obviously in the new release there have been many, many new features, many bug fixes, many improvements and most of them are really under the hood like speed improvements, for example for expressions, many effects have been updated, some of them are now 32-bit and many of them use GPU by now. But in this overview I want to concentrate on the more visual improvements, so on new specific effects and new tools you have in Adobe CC 19. So let's get started. The first thing is, and this is really cool, that you now have Mocha as a plugin inside of After Effects. So let me quickly show this to you. What I have here is me filming a smartphone and I have an app installed by the way, which gives me the tracking markers. And so now let's just track this. And for that, as I told you, we go to the effects and presets and just type in Mocha. There you have it, Mocha. A E C C. So let's just drag and drop it on the layer we want to track. Click on Launch Mocha for After Effects CC and it opens our Mocha window. This has also been updated so that it's more user friendly and easy to use. So you have all the options you want to track like translation, scale, rotation, skew, and perspective. And I'm just clicking all of them by now. And you have your X spline tools where you can create shapes for the parts that you want to track. This has also been updated. You can now also create rectangular shapes as well as circles or ellipses. And of course you have the plus sign for them if you don't want to create a new track but add to that shape that you have just created. So I want to do that for the rectangular tool and just track this part. Let's maybe just for the sake of it do it again with the ellipse tool and maybe one for the logo here. So everything is still as simple as it has always been and now you could just click on track backwards or forwards and if you're missing the tracking buttons over here because you maybe are used to it you can still choose the classic view and you're back to how you're used to have it but I'll just keep it for the essentials, which is a really nice working space. And then I'll just track forward. And by the way, as we're tracking in After Effects now, Mocha has also made some speed improvements. So this is tracking way faster than before. And you can see here that even though my thumb goes over the cross, it still makes a pretty, pretty decent tracking job. And this is really the power of Mocha. And now let's define our area where we want to insert a different screen later on. We can do that with the surface tool. By default, it just jumps to the first shape that we have created. So keep that in mind. And we just select the edges here as they are later on the edge points for the corner pin effect. Something else, we want to create a new X spline plus shape. And here, let's just go once around the shape of our smartphone. This is just so that I can show you all the benefits you have in After Effects later on. Having that done, we can just save this and close it. So here in After Effects, what we can do, we can twirl down all the settings we have here. And at first we can click on Create AE Masks. So you can see that all the masks we have drawn or the splines we have created in Mocha are now available as masks here in After Effects. So you can do really great stuff with that. But let's just disable those because we want to look at the tracking data. And over here what you can do is you can now select which tracking data you want to choose and we want to add an insert here so we want to have corner pin data with motion blur and I have already created this new insert which is a screen I can just show it to you I've made it in a smartphone aspect ratio and then just brought this into a new composition that has the exact same dimensions as our main composition let's just reset this and by hitting Control alt plus F it fits into that screen. So now back in our 
Mocha Comp. We want to apply the tracking data and in this way we want to use corner pin data with motion blur. We want to export it to our new insert and of course we have to create the track data. And by clicking on that you get all the layers you have created in Mocha and then you have to not only click on that, that's important, you have to enable it and hit OK. And now we can apply and export corner pin data to this layer. And there we have it when I scrub through this you can see that it sticks and when I just do a quick key with that color and lay it on top you can see how easy it is to create tracking data and you can now work on all of this because you have all the masks still available you have the whole smartphone rotoed out already you have corner pin data you can apply tracking data with the position everything from within our track layer. You can always click on the Mocha logo and you are back in action. Really, really nice, handy and absolutely my number one feature. Absolutely great and I will do separate in-depth tutorials on all of that later. So let's jump to the next big feature in After Effects CC19, which is a huge improvement for depth compositing. Let me tell you what I did here. I just created a composite that has some depth in it. And so let me just double click on it. I have two lights, a front, middle and back layer. I have a checkerboard as floor and a background. We can quickly look at this from a custom view. So this is my small 3D scene. Okay, let's close this. And now in our depth compositing, there are now a few effects that can read 3D data out of a composition that has 3D data. And this also works for Cinema 4D layers. So a really great way of working with 3D. So the first thing is that we can now create a depth mat by applying a depth mat effect to it. So I can just go to the depth and define a depth where I want to have my mat. Let's say I want to add some motion graphics or an object in between somewhere in the depth there. So now when I bring up the depth so I can see that now I can create depth mats. And I can also invert those or feather them. This is a really, really great way of working. Okay. Next one is the depth of field and you guessed that it works in the same way. So let's just increase the radius a little bit so that we see the effect. And also we need to play with the thickness. So here you can see the area where everything is in focus. And now we can just move it to the front or to the back. And this is half resolution. And this is a really great way of bringing depth to your animations. So next one is the 3D channel extract and this comes in really handy for many many different cases. And this is also very handy when you have a Cinema 4D layer with 3D information in it. And this is pretty easy, you just apply it and directly what you get is a depth mat. So you can define the black point which is of course the distance in C space as well as the white point and of course you can invert it. And this comes in really really super handy as a luma mat for depth compositing. So a really powerful tool here. And be aware you can also have like animations inside of that composition with a moving camera and stuff like that. So this is nothing you could easily do with masking out stuff or using separate layers as masks. This is really powerful. And last but not least, we have our 3D fog effect, which is also a great tool for adding depth or an extra value to your animation. And it works in the same way as the other effects. At first you define a fog color, let's go for red to make it obvious. And then you have to define a fog start and end. And you just have to be aware that this, what you see isn't zero, it's the distance from the camera. So you have to bring it up at first. So let's bring up the end 
and bring up the start. Of course, the end needs to be behind the start. And what you can do now is go down with the opacity a little bit and also with the scatter density. And now we bring the fog end to the very end of our plane and can play with the beginning. And you see that our front gets a little bit of the fog. The middle is almost covered in fog and you can hardly see the back here. So this is really great also for all sorts of revealing effects. Really powerful. And hey, just leave me a comment and just tell me what's your favorite new effect in After Effects. Which of the effects you think you want to use more often and which of the effects you don't think you use at all. And if you like this video, just give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'm also going to do a more in-depth tutorial on all of those effects and also on all the other changes that are now inside of After Effects CC19. So let's just jump to the next one, which is the responsive design time. And I've already created a small animation here. You can see that there are three dots and they are animated in and out. I tweak the curves a little bit. And when I select those layers and hit the U button, you can see that this is quite a lot of keyframe work and I have curves for all the parameters created. So this kind of took me a while and now we have a new feature which allows us to choose a time span and to kind of lock down the keyframes for that time span. Let's say you have more animation going on in the middle that you want to tweak, but you don't want to tweak all of this. So you can now lock a specific time span. And this gets very useful if you would later on create some essential graphics to maybe use in Premiere Pro. And this is originally where that locking function was created for, but it comes in really handy to lock down specific animations. And this is how you do it. Let's say we wanna have second one to two, we want to have this one locked. So let's just set the work area to here. You could have the beginning when you hit B and the end for hitting N. And now you just right click on it and besides the three properties you were always able to choose, you now have the create protected region from work area. There you have it. Let's maybe do the same for the four second to the end. And there's another way to do that. You could create a new mark. And by the way, in previous versions, you always had to drag and drop it out here. Now you can just go to a specific time, click on the mark and there you have it. So I have it here and can double click on it. And now I can choose that I want to make this mark a protected region and hit OK. And then I can just adjust the length of it. Really, really great. So how does this work now? Let's just take this responsive design time and put it into a new composition. I want to extend it because I maybe want to have 20 seconds of animation. And now you see that my composition has some blue overlay and this is the timing that is not changed when I'm changing the duration of the layer. So for example, I wanna enable time remapping and now I can just drag and drop the end of it. And you see the whole layer gets longer, but those areas, the animation still takes two seconds and the end is two seconds. Whoa, really, 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 really great. And there are also presets for that. If you want to go to responsive design time, you can create an intro, which automatically locks the first 15 seconds of your animation. You can also go to create outro, which does the same for the last 15 seconds of your animation. And then you can always create a protected region from the work area as I showed you. So a really, really powerful tool. And while we're at the time remapping, here's a small feature that's also new within After Effects. Let me just bring out the track clip that I have created. You see it's about 27 seconds long. So let's make this like 40 seconds. In order to time stretch this, you normally would have to go to time, type in a number, or you enable time remapping and have to set keyframes and so on and so on. But now comes the cool part. You just click on the layer and drag and drop the end, but you have to hold down the Alt button. And now you can just fine tweak it on the frame you wanna have it. So something that really comes in handy. Once again, this is something many, many After Effects users wanted for such a long time and now it's finally here and this is absolutely awesome. But before I black out here, let's go to the next 
feature. And this is also the last one that I want to show you today as a kickoff for After Effects CC19 and this is the new Puppet tool. For the old Puppet tool, which is still in there, we had the position pins and you could just move those around and this is great, but let's delete that because we have some new Puppet Tool features, which were implemented because of the new Adobe Character Animator, which is really, really great. I tried it out. It works super cool and therefore they had to design new bending, warping and Puppet Tool features and they are now all inside the new Advanced Puppet Tool. So let's directly go to the Puppet Advanced Pin Tool and I'll do the same. I'll click on her hips, on her knees, on her feet and maybe on the area that needs to shake. And now I have the same as before. I have a point in the middle that I can move, but I also have a circle and it has a small square and the square is for the scaling. So I can do stuff like scaling, but the really cool thing about this that I can now rotate all of that. And now I can make up for really, really organic, human-like motions. So really, really powerful. And you also have the Puppet Bend Pin Tool, which is new, which is almost the same. You don't have the ability to move it because it is aware of the mesh that is created. You can see that mesh that is automatically created. So when you rotate on here, you can see that everything is following. So you can directly see the difference if I'm moving the advanced tool, which also allows me to move it. And by using the bend tool, which deforms it in a more organic way. But anyways, this is something that really helps to get the last few percentages of your animations nailed and to make them really look fluid, smooth, organic, human-like. Just a perfect tool for so, so many different cases. So this is it. Those are my four favorite new features within After Effects CC19. So I hope you like the new features and I hope you liked this video. So once again, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you liked it and just leave me a comment. What do you think about the new features of After Effects? Do you already have ideas on how to use them? Let me know and for now I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects CC19.